Hi guys, Kim Cash here. Today is the 20th of December. We're getting really close to um, actually Christmas and I'm getting my present off my advent calendar. This is something we do for the 24 days of Christmas. And let's see what I got. Unicorn slippers. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. I know it's Kara that gave this. Oh, and some Godiva chocolate. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> I'm going to today just film some um, more house remodeling and me working on some more gnome shirts for our Christmas Day attire. <laughs> if you guys are interested, just keep watching. Hi. I'm Lars, Kim's husband, and just want to show you what we're doing back here. Uh, last weekend, we decided to rip up uh, one of the all the carpets in a closet in one bedroom, and this back hallway. This was a gray. Here's a carpet over here that it was. We ripped that up, sanded it all up, put three or four coats of of uh, super hard bare thing on the on the ground, and this is what's here. So now I'm going to be finishing out with all the edging and stuff. I've made a, I customized a little three-quarter round to go from the slate down to the flooring there. So it'll be nice and smooth transition. And then I made for here, we have a bedroom back here that we haven't finished the floor. We haven't pulled up the carpet yet. So we need to have a transition from carpet to wood. So had a whole bunch of from our last big flooring project upstairs. We had uh, tongue and groove uh, three quarter inch hickory. And I had some a bunch of pieces left over and here's a small piece. So I thought, well, I'll just use that and I'll make a, a threshold out of that because it's super, super hard. And so we don't have to worry about it cracking or anything. So this is hickory. Usually it's a little more colorful than we had. Here's a piece that has, it's really beautiful wood and really hard. So then I decided, okay, now I would just go ahead and cut a 45 degree angle here. And then on the back of it, this is just a test piece. I did some grooves and it turns out this is what it ends up as. So I've sort of made a customized with a little groove to put, which will tuck over the edge of the carpeting. And then this will come right down here. So you go from a level up here down to here and it'll be a nice transition so I'm gonna screw that in there okay so here we are I have tacked down the edge of the carpet with some super sharp a little uh, carpet nails so that's not going to go anywhere and so I've cut this and designed it so that when I put this down here part of the board will fit right over the carpeting is underneath here, so we'll keep a little pressure on there. And I'm just going to put these four screws in here, and then I'm going to finish this. Uh, pull the plugs in, put some plugs in there, and and varnish it, and it'll look to, it'll look really nice. You mean wood plugs? Yes, wood plugs. Are you going to have to make those yourself, or do you buy them? I already made those. I made those from. Yeah. So what I do is here, you pre-drill these holes. And then I'm using one and a quarter inch uh, fast tap screws. That's going to go in there. And then when I get, have it in there, there's going to be a little hole there. So uh, when I did the when I did the flooring upstairs with this, I bought a plug drill. So basically, you're basically drilling in. Uh, it's like a bit like this, and it ends up with a plug, so that you end up plugging back the same wood that with the same kind of wood that you just made whole so it's almost invisible when you do that. Or you can buy them at the store. It just happens to be this is hickory and it's very difficult to get hickory plugs so I had to make my own. So I'm going to put those in there afterwards after I screw down and glue them on there and then saw them off and sand and it'll look really nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and screw this in here. Up, right? 
So that is never going to come up. So then, as you can see here, there's a little hole here, and I'm going to put plugs in there. Okay, so I just wanted to show uh, how the application of those plugs work uh, that I'm putting on downstairs. So this is this is again hickory, but as you can see, these are all these are very they're multicolored, different tones and knots and all kinds of cool stuff. So what I did here for like the darker pieces like this compared to the light piece, I had drilled uh, extra uh, out of some extra length wood. I had drilled uh, uh, the plugs here and here's a plug. And they're kind of camouflaged in there versus over here where you have the lighter wood. You see how much this is lighter. These plugs are much lighter than these are. So they kind of, that way you can use whatever color or variety of wood you have and make plugs to kind of, uh, to kind of uh, make them not stand out a whole lot. If I got it's a standard plug, you could see plugs all over the place really easily. And this way it kind of hides it. Like down here, here's a plug. Here's another one that are kind of hard to see because they, they pretty much match up color of the wood. Oh. Okay, so here are some plugs that what I've been talking about. Here's a special drill bit, or it's a tool, that you put on a, a drill press, okay? And you go into, so you basically lay your wood underneath a drill press, and then when you drill into this here, you end up with a bunch of little pieces of wood sticking up like this, and then you break them off. And this is my own little homemade. Here's another one. Some of them, they look like they're a little burnt because of it, it gets very hot because this is very, very hard wood. Here's another one. So these are, this is what I use to put in there so I'm going to do put these in there now. Okay. So, I have my plugs and I just put a little bit of... What kind of glue is that? Can you show us? This is just a wood glue. Can you show us the label so we see? Tight Bond Ultra Ultimate. I'd like to use waterproof stuff just even though this is never going to get wet. You could use Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue is the same as uh, wood glue. It just uh, is cheaper. It's really the same thing. That's what the, the glue that your kids use in school, that's the same thing as uh, the, the stuff here. That, okay, so here I put it on here. And it goes right in here. That one didn't fit. They don't always fit. Now I'll try this one here. Well, let's see here. These are all cut from the same wood. Jam that in there. Put this one over here. the fourth one and then I just let them sit overnight get all hard so the wood can dry out and then in the morning I'll come with my saw and I'll trim it off and shear it off and you always want to have a wet towel to try to dry this off because once the glue dries on the wood, it will leave a mark. Even though it's wood glue or Elmer's glue or whatever. So you want to try always keep the wood wet when you uh, when you wipe. Oh, here we go. That didn't work very good. So I'll do that one again. I'm going to put varnish over. That also solidifies them a little bit. Sometimes these plugs don't want to stay in. Try this one here. That 
that should work. And that's that. And then tomorrow we come over here and we, after it's all hardened, I take a take my special super sharp saw and I just trim it off and then I sand it and then we put some some varnish on it and it's all done. So what I'm making right now is some little treats for the birds outside. My husband had some leftover oatmeal from his breakfast and I hate to throw anything away. It comes from, I guess, growing up in a family with nine kids. So we rolled it into balls, just the leftover oatmeal. Then I baked it on a low heat for about mm, half hour. And now I have, because I saved my bacon grease, my drippings, I'm gonna roll these in the bacon grease. Excuse me. And then dip them in bird seed. And then I can hang them outside or just set them around out in the yard. And I've got these nice little treats for the winter for the birds. So I'm just going to take some of my drippings and just put it on the balls. And it's a little messy, but that's okay. I can wash my hands and I have a little um, hand towel here. So I'm just going to get it all over the ball. And it's a healthy snack for the birds because it's just oatmeal and some bacon grease and some bird seeds. And the bird seeds have um, sunflower seeds and just a lot of little grains. So now I'm just going to roll them in the bird seed because the bacon grease will help the seeds stay on. I'm trying to get it well coated. My fingers are getting well coated too. Just rolling it around the bubble, the bowl. And this is just um, all leftover ingredients, the, well, uh, except for the seeds. Except for I do grow sunflowers in the summer, so I could use some of my own sunflower seeds if I still had some. <laughs> I guess I could do this in the fall too, but it's in the winter that the birds and the squirrels need something. So you can see that they're pretty well coated. And then I have some yarn, leftover little strands of yarn, just random pieces left over that you can use to tie and make a little hoop to hook them out in the um, trees. And then when your yarn gets worn away, it will break off and the birds will use it to make their nests. So you could also use Christmas, um, ribbon, but I don't think that would be good for the birds. I just think um, the yarn is just natural fiber and they're not going to, it's not going to hurt them. So there you've got a hoop to hang it outside. And I'm going to make a few more. And then when they dry in the morning, I'll go hang them out around the yard and the trees. And you could cross it so that there's no way it can fall off because that, and even if it does fall off, I mean, outside, a squirrel will grab it and take it and use it. So that's not a problem, really. I used to have a lot of um, bird feeders around the yard, but they've gotten worn out. I need to get some more. I do have a hummingbird feeder out there still. I mean, I took it in for the winter, but... I still have a hummingbird feeder. And I guess we could put just um, nails out like on the fence or something and hook them on that too. 
but you can see this is an easy uh, craft and if you do it with your children and remind them that you know in the winter animals have to forage for their food and it's not as plentiful as it is in the summer and fall so you might want to think about the animals the wildlife I guess more accurately said and because they've been um, cooked they're a little dehydrated so the yarn will you know it won't just go right in through them so I need to get some more yarn I have one other project here that <coughs> that I wanted to share with you Around the holidays, I make a lot of um, hot spiced wine because I love it. <laughs> so after you take your um, mulling spices out of either your cheesecloth or your, um, I use a strainer like a tea strainer and gather it, you can um, just take your mulling spices. And my mulling spices include some almonds, some raisins, some craisins, and then I've got cloves and cardamom seeds and um, if you want if you're interested in my mulling spices look at my gluck my hot spiced wine post down below and you'll get the recipe for that but after you've made your hot spiced wine you can pull out your mulling spices and whatever ingredients you use sometimes I use apples and sometimes I use oranges and then I put it on a sill pat and I'll bake it on low heat about 200 just to get it um, dehydrated absorb all the moisture and then I'll put it in a bowl for my potpourri so that I extend the use of the um, ingredients I hate to just throw things away these are nice ingredients but if you put them out like a potpourri right now um, well it could attract fruit flies in the winter maybe not as likely as if you do it in the summer or the early fall but this is a nice use and that way it won't attract any um, bugs so that's just another idea that I use or reuse <laughs> my things to make something new. So it's repurposing old ingredients. And there you have it, my um, treats for the wildlife and my homemade potpourri. I just want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little um, tutorials on making homemade potpourri and treats for wildlife. Also, I showed a little bit about my husband doing some remodeling we've been working on some remodeling and i'll show a little bit more about that when he finishes it up when he wraps it all up but thanks again for watching if you enjoy these crafts and these um, different kind of treat ideas then please subscribe to my channel and if you enjoyed this particular um, tutorial then give me a thumbs up thanks for watching bye